Okay, so today we're going to be talking about works cited. And first I'm just going to go over the basic format. Um, so please make sure that you title your works cited page. You want to put works cited centered at the top of the page. Don't underline it. Don't bold it. Don't use a different font. Don't do anything like that. It's very simple. You want your works cited page, just like the rest of your essay, to be Times New Roman 12 point font double spaced. Very simple. Um, also, don't put a bullet or a number or anything like that in front of your entries. Um, you're just going to start with your author's name, or if there's no author, you're, you'll start with your title, but you're not going to put anything in front of whatever comes first in your entry. Um, also, please make sure that you put your works cited page on its own page. So you're not going to just tack it on underneath the last sentence of your essay. You're going to go down to the next page, uh, the next blank page after uh, wherever your essay ends. And your works cited, it's called a works cited page. It will get its own page, even if you only have one entry. So make sure that whatever comes first here, this first letter, uh, that the first line is flush with the margin. Every other line needs to be indented. So you can see uh, how our indent is here. You can do that by, um, once you go onto the next page, hitting enter and then backspace and then tab to give it this indent. Um, or you can also just hit the space bar five times or, uh, or uh, doing something to, to get that indent. Either way you want to do it, it's fine. Make sure that if you have multiple entries that all of them are indented to the same space. So that's why using the tab uh, button is best because it will make sure they're all indented the same space. But if you're using the space bar, just make sure you hit the same number of spaces uh, every time you indent. Also, if you have uh, three lines, four lines, ten lines, every line other than the first one is going to get indented. When you have multiple entries, you're going to alphabetize them based on whatever letter comes first. So if it's an author's name, just the first name, or sorry, the first letter of the last name. Uh, if there's no author, you'll look at whatever the first letter of the article name is, and that's how you will alphabetize. Now, in your argument analysis essay, most of you are only going to have one works cited entry, so this will be easy, and that's all you have to, work, to worry about. But if you have more than one, and certainly for later papers that you do that will have multiple uh, entries, multiple sources, you need to remember to alphabetize. So let's talk now about things that get italics versus things that go in quotation marks. So the easiest way to remember it are things that go in italics are big things that can be broken into smaller pieces. So for example, the title of a book, the title of a website, the title of a magazine, journal, newspaper, the title of a documentary or a movie or a TV show, or an album. All of these are big things that can be broken into smaller pieces, therefore they get italicized. But those smaller pieces that can be taken from the big things, those go in quotation marks. So an article from a book, an article from a website, an article from a magazine, journal, or newspaper. So you can see here the bigger things go in italics, those smaller pieces that the bigger things can be broken down into go in quotation marks. A TV episode, a song title, um, again, these are pieces of something bigger, so they can go in quotation marks. Now, it's important to know what kind of source you're dealing with, uh, and because we're looking at the Bridging the Difference book a lot, and you might even be using an essay from it, um, make sure you know what kind of source you're dealing with. So the Bridging the Difference book, if you open it up and look through it, you'll see that it's lots of different essays by lots of different authors. We call that an anthology. You'll also notice that this book has an editor and it has an edition. So those are things we need to keep in mind as we're making our work cited, um, that we need that information in there. 
How do you use your Bridging the Difference book uh, for MLA formatting? Well, you can go to page 86 and it's got a basic guide and then it, it also has specific uh, examples for different types of sources. Or you can use websites for help. So I want to take just a second to show you my favorite MLA website. It's called the Purdue OWL. Um, so OWL stands for Online Writing Lab. Why I like this website so much is that uh, it's so easy to use. You can see over here you've got basic guidelines for making a works cited page. And then you also can look at it by format. So books. Periodicals, uh, so periodical means uh, newspaper, journal, magazine, electronic sources. So if it's a website or a database, you go there. Other common sources, this is going to cover things like movies and TV shows and songs. So it's really easy to use to just click on whatever type of source you're using to look through their guide and find examples and, and use it to help you make sure that you are putting uh, your works cited entries together properly because uh, I want to stress here, you don't have to memorize how to do this. I don't even have it memorized. All you have to do is know where to go to find instructions and examples to show you how to put the information together. So when it comes to, do I put a period here or a comma? Do I put uh, the name of my website first or the date it was published? Those kinds of things you don't have to remember. You just have to be able to find a place that tells you how to do it and follow those instructions. So let's go back to our lecture. Oh, and by the way, you can find this website um, just by Googling Al Purdue. Uh, and that is P-U-R-D-U-E. And uh, I also should have a link for it up, uh, up on Blackboard that you can find a direct link to take you there. Okay, so... Let's talk now about our Bridging the Difference book, um, how you would format uh, a work cited for one of the articles in Bridging the Difference. So things you would need to know, the author's full name, the title of the essay, the title of the anthology. Now we've talked about containers before. A container is just what is it that is holding your article that you want to cite? So. The title of a book, and in this case an anthology, would be our container. The editor's full name, because we do have an editor. The edition number, because we do have an edition. The company that published it, the year that it was published, and the page number it's on. So most of this information in here can be found on the copyright page. So you just flip through the first couple of pages, and you'll find that page that has the date, that has the publisher, and uh, it'll have all of this information on it. And then to find the page numbers, the title, the author, of course, you can use the table of contents or you can just go directly to the essay itself. When you put it all together, this is what it looks like. So for the essay, The Uneducated American, we've got our author's name, last comma first, the title here, the title of our anthology here in italics. Um, so again, notice the book title is in italics because it's a big thing. The smaller piece of the book, the article, is in quotation marks. Um, I want to take a second to point out, you see this is in uh, quotation marks, this is in italics. You will never have something that has both italics and quotation marks. This is an error I see a lot of students make. It's always going to be one or the other. You will never do both to a source. Um, okay, so we've got our editor, so edited by, and then our editor's name, uh, the edition number. So you'll put the number, and then you'll put these letters after. So if it's first, it'll be 1ST, second, 2ND, third, 3RD, and so on. Um, and then you'll put ED for edition. Here is our publisher. Here is our year it was published, and here are our page numbers. So this is what it looks like. If you are going to cite an article from uh, our Bridging the Difference book, and it would be very similar for any other anthology. Essay from a website. So here's what you need to know. The author's full name, if there is one, you're not always going to have an author. And remember, sometimes the author can be a group. So uh, for example, here, um, 
this is saying there's no website, but potentially you might be able to use the U.S. Department of State uh, as your author. So it's not always just a person. Sometimes it's a group or an organization that will be considered the author. The title of your essay. The title of your website. That's your container here. The website is what contains your source. The company that publishes or sponsors the website which sometimes you'll find and sometimes you won't. Here in this example, we see it's down at the bottom. Often it's going to be at the bottom of the page. The date the article was published, which again, you may or may not have. If you do put it in there, if not, just leave it out. The URL, so that's going to be uh, the www.whatever.com.org.gov. Um, so you can just copy and paste the URL directly from your search bar into your paper, please remember to unhyperlink it. So hyperlink is when it underlines and usually turns blue uh, your web link when you put it into your paper. That is not MLA format. It should not be underlined and it should be in black font, not blue. So the way to fix that, um, you can often just hit the backspace button if it hyperlinks it and that will undo it or you can right click and say unhyperlink. So that's how you fix that problem. And then finally, the date that you access the website. So here's what it looks like when you put it all together. We're using that same essay, but now instead of looking at uh, it being published and bridging the difference, we're looking at if we'd read it online in the New York Times. So again, we have our author, last name, comma, first name. The Uneducated American, our article title in quotation marks. The New York Times is our website. That's going to be in italics. Now, why do we have this twice? Because the New York Times is the name of our website, but it's also the publisher of the website. So website name gets italics. Publisher name doesn't. That's why we've got it twice, once in italics and once not. Then we've got the date that it was published. So we're going to put it in this format, day, abbreviated month, year. And then we've got our URL here. And at the end of the URL, we're going to put a period. Then we'll put accessed and we'll put the day that we looked at it. So this is what it looks like when you put it all together. Okay, let's talk about documentaries. Um, and keep in mind that movies are the same. Uh, and if film sort of counts for both documentary and movie, it, it you know, a documentary is usually going to be nonfiction. A movie is usually going to be fiction. A film means it's just something that was shot on film. Um, so whatever it is you're calling it, it's going to be the same format. So you need your title your director, the name of the performers or host or narrator or whomever um, is actually on the screen or talking on the screen, the production company, the year it was released, and if there's a container. So we'll talk about that in just a second. You're always going to need to know all of these things. It's going to be a little bit more information if you watch it on a website like, Net like uh, Netflix or Hulu or YouTube. Um, but you're always going to need all of this stuff. So where can you find this information? Um, if you don't have a copy of the actual film that you can you know, hold and, and look at, then you can always go to this website, imdb.com. So this stands for Internet Movie Database. I'll show it to you briefly. So this is the website. And here is our sample documentary. Oops. If I could type. So we type in our movie, we find it here, we click on the link, and it will give us all the information that we need. So we can see up here, it's from 2008. And if we scroll down, we'll see here's the director's name, here's the star of the movie. If you scroll down even further, down to uh, here, we'll see more information. Um, 
you'll see that it's a documentary. Uh, here's the other thing we need, company credits. So this is uh, the company that made the movie. Uh, there's several listed here. There's often lots of different production companies that contribute to making a movie. All you need is one of them to list on your, uh, on your work cited. So I usually say whatever comes first, just take that as your, uh, as your company name. Don't do it in this format though. Don't write, write Weinstein Company, comma, the. Uh, you can just write Weinstein Company, that's fine. So let's go back and see what it all looks like when we put it together. So we've got our title here in italics because it's a big thing. Then we're gonna put directed by Morgan Spurlock, that's our director, performances by Morgan Spurlock because he is both the director and the star of the movie. Um, Weinstein here, or you could put Weinstein Company, and then the year that it came out. Now, if you have a container, you're going to include all of the same information that we had above, but then you're also going to give the name of the container, um, the again, if it was Netflix or Hulu or uh, HBO Go or YouTube or whatever it was, you'll put the name here in italics, and then you're going to put the link to uh, to the actual uh, film after it. So that's what it will look like. You can also, if if you're watching it on your television rather than um, than online, uh, I think there's a document number that you can get, or you know, there an ID number for it. So that's another option to put on here if you don't have access to the actual link. Television shows are going to be a little bit different. You need the title of the specific episode, the title of the show itself, the network or station that it was aired on, the date that it was aired, um, and again a container if you're watching it through uh, Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, YouTube, something like that. Uh, again, that, that's just extra information you'll want to add. So here's what it looks like. Oh, and, and again, you can use imdb.com to find this information, or you can Google the title of the show, and you can often um, find websites like tv.com that will list all the episodes and give you all the information that you need. So here's what it looks like. Um, if you just watched it on TV, you're going to have title in quotation marks, and a uh, title of the episode comes first then the title of the TV show in italics, then the network, comma, uh, and then the date that it was aired. Now, it doesn't matter if you watched it on a different day. Um, so you can find the original air date and put that, or you can put the day that you saw it when it was on TV. Uh, either of those are going to be fine. I'm not looking it up to, to make sure. So as long as you have an approximate date here for when you watched it or when it aired, that's all you need. Now again, just to show you what it looks like when you add the container information, you can put Netflix on here and then the Netflix or the uh, ID number to whatever it was that you watched. Uh, YouTube, you would put YouTube and then the URL that you went to. So it's just a little bit of extra information if you watched it through one of these containers, but this is what it will look like. Um, and if you're wondering why there's this space here, sometimes when you go to put in your URL, it won't all fit on that next line. And so if that happens, you just let it look like this. That's Don't deliberately put that space in there, but if you copy and paste it and that's what it does, just leave it like that. So if you're doing any other type of medium that you're not sure about, uh, a political debate or speech or advertisement, um, what I recommend that you do is Google whatever type of medium it is plus MLA Works Cited. Um, you will likely get lots of Google hits saying, you know, here's where to go to uh, see examples and instructions for how to put this into proper works cited format. 
The only thing that you want to be careful of is to make sure that it that it is MLA 8 format. Um, so don't use an older version. But uh, but that's how you can find it. A lot of times it will be that owl at Purdue website that pops up uh, if you Google these things, and and that's a good one to use. If you're not sure, if you find this and you put it together, you're not sure if it's right, this is something you can always come ask me about and I will be happy to take a look at it for you and make sure that you've done it correctly. So finally, just as a reminder, uh, how do you make your work cited uh, pages? How do you know how to put the information together? Well, you've got your Bridging the Difference book and the Works Cited Info starts on page 86. You've got uh, the OWL at Purdue website and other similar websites. And then lastly, I want to remind you, you do have EasyBib. It's acceptable, but use with caution. Make sure that it's using MLA 8 version. Um, at the time that I'm recording this, I'm not sure that they have MLA 8 up and running yet. I think they're still using MLA 7. Um, that might have changed, but, uh, but make sure that it is the most updated MLA format. And also remember that EasyBib is just software that uh, it can have errors and often does. So I always encourage you to go back and look at it again and double check with, with your book or with another website to make sure that it looks correct. So here is your writing assignment. You're going to make two different works cited entries. So the first one is going to be for the Let Them Eat Dog essay. And I want you to cite it how you read it. If you read it from Bridging the Difference, cite it uh, as an essay from Bridging the Difference. And if you read it as an article off of uh, the Wall Street Journal website, cite it in that way. Uh, and if you need a reminder of how to do that, just rewind this video. It shows you how to do both of those things. Um, so don't forget that that's there. And then you're going to make a works cited entry for the documentary, The Cove. So for that one, don't forget, you can go to IMDB and find all the information that you need, such as director, performers, year it was released. Um, so that's how you find all of that stuff. So make a works cited entry for both of these things. We'll talk about these uh, in our next class and make sure that you've done it correctly. And as always, if you have any questions about anything, uh, just send me a quick email.